A blood moon lunar eclipse will shine in the sky on May 15th, 2022, but that's depending on your location and time zone. And so to learn a little bit more about that special sky event, I have a guest with us today. Joining us is Brett Denevi, a lunar scientist at Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory. Thanks so much for talking with us. Yeah, my pleasure. So what is a lunar eclipse and what makes this full moon so special? Yeah, so as you're watching the lunar eclipse, what you see is the moon slowly start to darken in the sky. And the reason that's happening is the Earth is coming in between the sun and the moon. So its shadow is slowly starting to move across the moon. And uh, this full moon, well, every full moon is special in my book, but uh, sometimes the moon is a little bit closer to the Earth than other times. And so sometimes it looks a little bit bigger in the sky. And this is one of those times uh, that some people call a super moon. <laughs> and where is this lunar eclipse visible? Uh, the eclipse is visible actually across much of the world. Uh, parts of it will be visible from uh, Eastern Europe all of it through uh, South Central America and most of North America, and then all the way out to even New Zealand. The moon will turn red during this lunar eclipse. Why is that? Yeah, this is actually a, a really fun reason, um, because if you imagine yourself uh, standing on the moon, looking up at the sun during this eclipse, as the earth moves across to block out the sun, it's blocking out almost all of the light, but a little bit is getting in around the edges. And so that light is traveling through the earth's atmosphere. And what you're seeing projected onto the moon, you know, just like you see a, a kind of orangish reddish glow in the sky on sunset or sunrise on earth, that ring of light that you see from the moon is all of the Earth's sunrises and all of the Earth's sunsets at once projecting onto the moon. And NASA has been studying the moon for almost 13 years with the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. And so what are some of your favorite things that this mission has showed us? Yeah, I work on the camera team for that mission. So there are so many, you know, just beautiful images. Um, but some of the science that has come from them that I find particularly exciting is we are looking at volcanic features that formed, you know, not just billions of years ago, but in some case much more recently than we thought possible. This is one of those features we think may have formed uh, just tens of millions of years ago, uh, which for the moon, for geologic history is actually quite young. And then we've also seen new impact craters that have formed during the mission. So we can image the moon before they happened. We keep imaging, repeat imaging of the surface, and we can pick out new craters that have formed on the moon just while we've been in orbit. That's phenomenal. Now, the spacecraft is solar powered, right? So how does it prepare for an eclipse? Yeah, so luckily it has batteries, but uh, we use the, the solar panels to charge up the batteries. And so during the eclipse, um, there's not enough power to run all of the instruments. So we prepare by shutting down those instruments, monitor the spacecraft throughout the eclipse to make sure it's still healthy, doing it's warm enough. And then as the eclipse ends, we can begin powering back on, return to taking data. And when is the next lunar eclipse and how can people learn more about it at NASA? Yeah, so after the one on Sunday, there will be one on November 7th and 8th later this year. And anytime you want to learn about the moon, you can head to moon.nasa.gov. You can also follow at NASA Moon on Twitter. Make sure to bookmark those links. So thank you so much for your time today. And join us at space.com for more lunar eclipse coverage and other space news. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.